Question number five, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, as the Prime Minister set out at COP27, we are committed to spending £11.6 billion on international climate finance over the time frame that was originally envisaged. Thank you very much. Um, well, I have some comfort from, from his reply. He will know that there's been much speculation and indeed some leaks in the national media that seem to demonstrate that uh, there was real concern that the government was reneging on its climate finance commitments. But can he now explain to me and the 50 cross-party MPs who've written to the Prime Minister on this when that uh, 11.6 billion will be delivered in full in terms of a breakdown by each year and can he explain how it will be met and ensure, assure us that it will not be met by raiding the aid budget? He will know that this money is meant to be new and additional, and it would be absolutely uh, wrong for this money to come at the expense of, of those recipients who are expecting that aid budget and should have it. Well, Mr Speaker, she will have noticed yesterday that there was a very considerable return of transparency in the figures that are being published by the Foreign Office, and she will have seen that the allocations for aid for next year uh, are nearly double what they were this year. And we have got a commitment of greater transparency, and I expect to be able to publish in full how we will reach the £11.6 billion, uh, probably in September. Yeah, the Minister will realise that £11.8 billion is quite a lot of money. How do the UK's international climate, climate finance commitments compare to G7 and G20 other countries, or historically to before 2010? Minister. Well, we are a global leader on these issues, as my honourable friend uh, knows. And we have set a lead, part of that leadership, but only part of it is in respect of uh, money. And the UK has delivered extraordinarily on its commitments. For example, uh, we've met our previous climate finance commitments, including spending nearly £6 billion between 2016 and 2021. SNP spokesperson Drew Andrew. Thank you, Mr Speaker. The effects of uh, climate change are intensifying. NASA have just reported that uh, June was the hottest month ever recorded. So it is important that the government stands by its promise to double international climate finance. Will the Minister at the dispatch box confirm that that is exactly what they will do? Or is the rumour that they are about to renege uh, actually uh, the, the, the case in this point? Yeah, yeah. Well, Mr Speaker, he will have heard my response to the Honourable Lady uh, behind him. I can tell him that we are committed to tripling our adaptation finance from £500 million in 2019 to £1.5 billion by 2025. So I hope that he will wait with admitted patience until September, when we will be able to set all these figures out. Ruth Cabrit. Question number six, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, we condemn the Taliban's decision to restrict the rights of women and girls. We are working with international partners to urge the Taliban to reverse their decisions, banning women from working for the United Nations, NGOs and denying girls access to education. Gabriel. Thank you, uh, Mr Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his, arg uh, for his answer. Uh, um, and as he says, in, in Afghanistan, households led by women are effectively banned from leaving the home uh, and are therefore wholly dependent on female Afghan aid workers. With the Taliban now effectively banning aid workers, female aid workers, from delivering humanitarian aid, even a one to two week delay in reaching families meaning, means that mothers are turning to appallingly unacceptable negative coping mechanisms such as child marriage. What impact assessment has the Taliban's policy had on the distribution of essential aid and what's the government doing about it? Well, the, the impact assessment is truly horrific. Uh, the effect of the Taliban decision is absolutely appalling and we're working with other countries to press the Taliban to reverse their decision on education, especially the 23rd of March and the ban on girls going to secondary schools. But in respect of the specific point she makes, we are doing everything along with our uh, like-minded allies and indeed others with greater influence on the Taliban to try and rectify this. <laughs>